Okay, so here's going to be the overview of the machine. Um, I did add the door uh, port there. Uh, we didn't have that. Um, so I did add that in. On the drawing I had, I just had the three because we added the, the third. So when I was testing everything and debugging it, I was like, shoot, we need the door port. So there's the door port. Um, here's kind of the inside. I am gonna, we are going to ship it where these guys are going to communicate with just the... RS-232 port, so I had to get two more of them cables in. That way, if you wanted to program the HMI to work off Ethernet, um, you can off that port down there, uh, right below a USB. Um, your USB is going to plug in straight right there. Uh, to turn this guy on, you got your six breakers here. These guys here are going to be for, uh, they just direct connect straight into the, to the heater. Uh, these other three will control the other heater and pump. Um, right now, I just have two legs, um, so I'm going to use those two. However, those legs, since it, I mean, you've got three legs back there, but it works off a two or three phase. Um, PLC is working off just two phase as well, two hots in the ground. Um, yeah, power for that guy is just 24 volts, which comes off the power supply there. Um, anyway, uh, you got your e-stop here, that e-stop, e-stop there, e-stop kills power, you can see now power's going on with that guy. Um, I'll clean up this data cable, and then also I'm just running 220 off uh, one of our down spigots here. So basically I just am hooking my ground up to uh, incoming an extra ground here. Um, your heater pumps, one, two, three, for your legs, one, two, three, and then use that ground. Um, pump one, two, three is here. And then um, there's an extra spot here on this ground for, for the pump. Or you can use, you know, an extra one here because it is only 5 amps. I, I'm actually running ground straight to here so you can pull off there if you want. Or there. They're all connected. Anyway, next, basically, uh, your HMI is going to say something like that. That's usually, however, when I'm doing USB login, whenever I start it up, I take the USB out. That way I know it senses this USB to write. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And that screen's going to go away. Just how I do it. Um, some people just run their USB and they're good to go. Okay, now, so here it is. Your low water's on. Basically, it's full now. Um, right there, it's low. So basically, if this guy fills up, he'll say full. <coughs> Excuse me. I just got your two probes um, hooked into this guy here. I still need to label them. Got those guys. Um, but I wanted to show you this. Basically... Okay, for your heat pump, if you hold that down for three seconds, um, you'll see both of those guys kick on. However, you can see that the heat is at 64, <coughs> and I'm using a recipe where it's at 67. Um, actually, I'm going to, yeah, I have it at 67. I'm going to keep it 67, um, but that's just the program I have loaded in for testing. Um, what I'm going to do is warm up these heaters just by, I'm just going to rub my hand on them. So this one's going to be the bottle temperature. Both of them, uh, I'm going to make it, make it, both of them get up to temperature so you can see the heaters do shut off. Okay. And both these temperatures, you know, you set them in your recipes. Oh, and also, I'm sorry, let me uh, maybe do this for you. So the te the heaters, so bottle temperature, um, the let me cool this guy off real quick. He's cool back down to wrong one. Okay, so right now heaters are on. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to now warm up the bottle temperature, and you'll see heaters are still going to be on. It only is going to work off your water temperature. Bottle temp is just kind of there, and if it isn't at bottle temp, it's going to, you know, not count the countdown. This one should get warm here pretty quick. Ooh, toasty. Okay. So... That guy's gonna be at temperature, but you can see heaters are still on. 
Okay, let me warm up this one. You should get, get there here in just a second. Yeah, okay. So you can see heaters are off even though it's still on because it's at temperature. Um, even when I close, cool this one down, you know, heaters are still off on bottle temp. Okay, if I hold that down, that's kind of how those are controlled. Uh, next is the pump. Um, if I hold that guy for your pump, you can see this, your controller goes on. Um, you can bring it up, you can control your speed here. Um, I just kind of put it at 39 hertz for right now. Um, if I turn that off, he turns off. All right, next is the program. Um, so I just kind of have one in here for three minutes in water temp setting at 67. If I hit on, he's gonna start pasteurizing. Um, heaters are not on because of that temperature. However, it isn't going to count up because my bottle temp is wrong. It's not at temperature. So we'd just be kind of sitting here and the lapse time is going to be counting up. But let me go ahead and bring him up. Just so we can start counting a minute. Um, same thing happens if uh, this guy goes, he's going to pause, you know, that... that Lapse time isn't going to go, um, all that stuff. Oh, also low water. If it's low water, um, heaters are going to kick off. I guess I could show you that. Oh, I guess he's not a temp, but those are, those are also kind of kick off. Let me, I'll cool him down you can see. Kind of a lot to this thing to show you, but just everything we're testing. Okay, so it says low water, everything's blue. Um, it's because of low water. If it's full, he's red. Now, if for some reason, you know, if he cools down here, and low water goes, see, so he's heating right now, but if low water goes on, the heaters do shut off as well. Um, you can see that, but now I got water. So low water, low water. If I turn that sucker to high, heaters kick back on because he's calling for it. Okay, on to the next thing. You can see our elapsed time is at one minute so far. Remaining time is still three. Haven't been able to do much so far because we haven't had our water good. We don't have heat. We're just all screwed up right now. Okay, so let me warm back up our uh, water temp above 67 here. Alrighty. So you can see we're now at lapse time, two minutes, three minutes still remaining. Okay, pause also works. Um, when I do push pause, He's gonna kick, you can see that that motor's ramping down. Um, he shuts off. If I unpause it, he's gonna basically, uh, oh, so ramp down. If I unpause it, he's gonna slowly ramp up, kind of like a soft motor start. Uh, makes it super nice to let your motor kick up and not use a lot of amps right at the start to get that, that big exertion. Um, let's see, so as far as door jar, um, the, the field connection's coming for that today. Um, this guy can still ship tomorrow. Um, that's easy to do. It's already programmed in. So this is kind of about everything. You're going to see that elapsed time now that everything's kind of running good. Um, you can see, or remaining now into two. Um, elapsed time, it's taken at three minutes though. So we'll just kind of let this sit here and do its thing. And then these guys, if for some reason your guy did do a manual heat or something like that, 
um, these will turn off when the cycle's over. They're actually not even going to look at it right now because it's already in the cycle. Um, it looks at certain characteristics to turn these on and off. Uh, these just work. They control the same thing based off the ladder logic in the program. So th those, if someone does kick that on, it's not going to matter. So I'm going to raise this guy back up, otherwise uh, we'll be sitting here longer. And then the other cabinet, why that guy's gone, you know, same thing, just everything's flipped. So um, there's that cabinets on that side. He stops over there. We got one minute left here. Um, and the door open, it'll tell you, you know, door open up here if it's open. Stuff like that. I wish I could show you that now, but um, it's it's not plugged in. But I think this will show you anyway, everything you need to know. If the door is open, it pauses it just as this would do. Um, your motor would turn down, all that good stuff. For making, or there you go. So there's cycle done. Um, there's kind of what it'll look like. Everything's kind of closed off. The only thing I didn't, I didn't hide these ones, just so you can see elapsed time, how much it was and stuff, uh, visually if you wanted to. Uh, so there's all that. Uh, you can see right here, um, stuff is data logging. It's basically data data logged because uh, the cycle's done. That's what initiates it. So we could grab its data. If I hit OK, we'll just kind of let it save it to that SD card real quick. Then I'll go ahead and load that up so you can see it. Um, one thing on the e-stop, so if I'm running a cycle and I cool, let me cool this guy. Okay. So if I cool him, you can see heaters are on. If I do hit the e-stop over here, it kills power, which basically kills everything. Your motor kind of shuts down. Um, it doesn't kill power, you know, incoming power, but it does kill power to your PLC. You don't really want a whole bunch of voltage uh, running through a, a button you could touch. So that's kind of how we do those. Um, I did kill the power to this guy, so let me go ahead, go over to this laptop. Okay, so plugged in my USB. Um, you have I have an alarm file here, so you could see basically 10:27. So this was the latest one. Um, you can see I did one at 10:07. Um, so this would be our newest record here. Um, remaining time ended at zero. The fill time took five minutes. Um, water heat was 70 when it ended 73 for bottle. Um, I didn't have a name in there because it's it's not a saved file. I didn't save it, I just manually put that variable in there, but it would tell you the name of the recipe. Um, the programmable time, programmable water heat, and programmable bottle heat. That's as much text as I could put on one line, so that's what it is. So uh, water goes with this guy, and a bottle goes with this guy. Uh, so there you go. There's kind of some data logging for you too. Uh, you can mess, if you download up the, the Seymour program, if you go to databases, event manager, you could add as many data logs as you want. So there you go. Got any questions on it? Let me know.